powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, this is Football at Four. And Football at Four is powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Jeff Mosher's here from InsideTheBirds.com and the Inside the Birds podcast. And, of course, the Eagles are 5-0. and oh. How'd they get it done? We'll bring in Jeff Mosher to get a little bit more detailed on the win as the Eagles, maybe their uh, toughest battle so far. Obviously, they won a close game against the Lions, Jeff, but that was a shootout. This was a close win in a game where they really had to kind of get into a fight. Uh, but would you say, you know, you, you left impressed with the way they won that game 20-17? to 17? I think there were, there were parts of it I was impressed with. With Mike, yeah, I mean, I think anytime um, you go to a place like Arizona and you travel the day before, and it's a place they have not won in the history of the franchise, and it's and you know the Cardinals, I don't think are a great team, but they're not a bad team, and um, I thought they were the more physical team on Sunday, the Cardinals, and and the aggressor in some some respects. So I, yeah, I think you always come away with surviving all of those elements and saying, hey, you're still undefeated, you won a game, even when you didn't play your best. Yeah, you look at how they won yesterday, Jeff. Take, give us a couple takeaways with how they won the game uh, that you said, all right, that's what, you know, because I thought Sirianni brought up the point in the post game. hey, we did, we went to our identity, right? We're a physical team. And I thought hearing him say that and then watching how they won kind of shows in what his mind, when push comes to shove, that's who they are. Well, I think what the Eagles have done well over the first five games of the season is get an early jump uh, in games. It's been the second quarter where they've been ridiculously productive. And I I think we can all agree that the 20 point, 20, whatever it was points per quarter, the second quarter that they were averaging was, was not sustainable. Um, So, and they didn't score 20 points this time, but they got up 14, nothing. And they made, I will say, I think they made fewer mistakes. I don't think that they were the more physical team. I thought Arizona was the more physical team. I think the Eagles got away from running um, at times. Uh, I thought they were a little over-dependent on screens as a, as a counter to the blitz. But I will say they made fewer mistakes. They were, where they won was they were, they were more fundamental. I mean, th- look at the difference between Kyler Murray sliding and not realizing that, you know, he, he shouldn't have clocked it there. And the poise that Jalen Hurts showed where Jalen Hurts made an unbelievable throw there on the last drive against some intense pressure to Dallas Goddard. And in general, Jalen's been a very smart, uh, very intelligent, very cerebral quarterback who doesn't make a lot of bad mistakes. And the Arizona Cardinals, along with Murray's slide, which was clearly a mistake, and their kicker, their backup kicker, being unable to make a kick. And then Hollywood Brown dropped a clear, clear pass over the middle that if that was not a touchdown, it would have been a 40 to 50 yard gain at least. And who knows? What happens after that? And Zach Ertz dropped the pass. So I just think in general, in a game where the Eagles were sort of up against it and it felt like if five more minutes were left in that game, they would have lost. They, they were the team that made the fewer mistakes uh, in the end. Jeff Mosher with us. And it's interesting to me that you say the Cardinals were the more physical team because, like Mike said, when the chips were down, like when it counted, the Eagles went to their ground game and were able to convert first downs. And then, of course, like you said, Jalen Hurts with that unbelievable uh, – and that was a play that he uh, called on his own. I think he audibled into that play himself. So you got to give him props for that too. Uh, There were some uh, nicks and bruises there on the offensive line. How much do you attribute that to the fact that they weren't able to run the ball the way they have in the past? It's it's very possible. I mean, all, you know, it's hard to all, always run into a blitz as well. When when Arizona was the second highest blitzing team in the league, and they came in and they certainly put a lot of guys in scrimmage. They have an athletic front seven, so that that's partly responsible for it as well. Um, but you know, I, I you know when you look at what their offense was, Miles Sanders averaged three point nine yards per carry, uh, and and so maybe there is something to the fact that. There were guys in and out on that offensive line. I'm sure that wasn't easy. Uh, I do give them credit. Um, but this time, Jalen Hurts is running, and Jalen himself ran 15 times for 60 yards. That's 4.1. Usually he's a little higher when he's, he's running all over people. So, um, in, you know, th- they'll, have to, they'll have to navigate this because they've had Sayamalo come in and out of a game. They've had, now they've had Jason Kelsey come in and out of a game. Who knows what's going to be at left tackle this week? 
Um, I, you know, I, I have some severe doubts that, that Jordan Maialata, based on some things that I heard, is, is going to make it back. We'll have to see how he recovers the next two days. You um, mean make it back? So Jack Driscoll is there? You mean make it back this week, for right? The Cowboys. For the Cowboys game. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm just clearing because yeah. you said I have some doubt whether he's going to make it back. If you generalize oh, oh, it, no, no, if no, I no, just no, turn no. the radio on in mid sentence, it's like he might not make it back all year. <laughs> oh man, that would have been. I mean, imagine Twitter would have had a field day with that. Yeah. Um, so I don't no, want to no, aggregate that one for you. Game. Right, <laughs> and then of course the left guard Landon Dickerson's been battling this this Boy, foot injury yeah. since, um, and now that he was off the injury list going into this game, and then he left the game with what they said was like a leg, a lower leg injury. I, you know. Who knows what's going on there? But he's been in and out. Uh, they don't have the depth that they once had because a couple of teams have pilfered some of their, their better backups. So it's a little bit of a concern going forward. And, and maybe to your point, Pete, that was one of the reasons that they didn't run the ball as dominantly. They still ran well. I, mean, I think, you know, right. at the end of the day, 139 yards, four and a half a carry, 4.2 a carry is good. But the Cardinals ran better than they did. Yeah, including the Cardinals' backup once Connor went out. Uh, they had that rushing touchdown where that looked very effective as well. Jeff Mosher is with us. I do want to ask you about Jalen Hurts and the growth of Jalen Hurts because, again, we saw another play yesterday, and we referenced it a minute ago, that play where he, he basically looked at the Goddard thing and, and called that on his own. Earlier against Washington, that play where he did this with his hands, and you can see me on the stream, you mm-hmm. know what I'm talking about, where he basically yes, audible sir. to play right at the end zone and, and, and threw it where only A.J. Brown could get it. I mean, are these throws that a year ago uh, Jalen Hurts is able to make two years ago? I mean, is this uh, no, are we seeing the, yeah. him mature and grow in front of our eyes? 100%. I, you know, on a day where he wasn't at his best, I think, you know, the throw that he made to Dallas Goddard that I referenced, and then in the first half, he eluded some pressure, rolled to his left all the way until he got to the sideline, and then he fired it over the middle to, uh, was it Goddard again? No, I forget who caught that ball. Maybe that was Devontae? one of the No, that's right. It was Devontae. Good yeah, call. He had a lot um, of targets, so that was an easy guess for me. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so those were two throws that, um, I don't think he, I mean, yeah, he made some good throws. Last, I don't want to make it seem like he didn't make any good throws last year, but teams last year that were successful against him, guys were teams that blitzed him uh, from all different directions and tried to get him to throw on the run. You know, the Giants, the Bucks. Uh, there were a couple other games in there. I think the Kansas City Chiefs tried to do that too. And he's a little bit better equipped for it this year. Now, we'll see going forward because it, it, it's clear since week two, or is it week three, the Vikings game? I can't even remember anymore. Week two that teams have said, all right, you, you can't sit back. You don't have to blitz him like the Lions did, but you can't sit back like the Vikings did. Right. Teams have tried to pressure him more since that week two game. Yeah, Ed Donatel, I remember that where uh, the, the broadcast kept saying, what, what are they doing? Like, what, why, are they, why do they keep sitting back in this loose coverage? Uh, I know this, too, that, that play you're talking about where he threw it back across the middle. I saw one film breakdown analysis where the person was saying, like, as a quarterback, that's a no-no. Like, your momentum's going backwards. But, and he turned his hips, and you throw it back across the middle. And, you know, maybe a year ago, that, that's a pick. And he's able to – even the bad decisions are coming up roses. His feet were set. I think yeah. that's the important thing, Pete. I mean, he, he, he can make that throw if the coverage isn't tight, if the window's big enough. That wasn't fully across his body because his feet were set. He was able to square up and be able to fire it there. If he was still drifting toward the sideline, and now you're watching me on the street, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then has to kind of like throw across the body, of course, that's a no-no. And that, that's the kind of throw he tried to make last year. If you guys remember right before halftime, Against the Giants, he got picked off on a play. He just should have thrown it out and taken the field goal. But he was rolling to his right, and then he tried to throw it in there in, into a tight window. And so that, that's the difference. This year, he's able to make that throw. His feet are set. He's more poised. And look, to your point, look at the juxtaposition, right? You've got Kyler Murray, who somehow got a contract extension from a team that still th- doesn't believe that he studies hard enough. I mean, he's the number one overall pick. You can see the arm talent. It's great. He has a very good arm. I mean, it's... It's obviously better than Jalen Hurts' arm in general, but but does he have any of the intangibles? No, he made a lot of mistakes, right? A lot of mistakes under pressure there, whereas Jalen Hurts is the second-round pick who may not have even been that if the Eagles didn't take him there, who was the work in progress, who was uh, the other Oklahoma quarterback who was not the darling, like, number one overall pick like Kyler Murray, but he's clearly been a more 
a more studious quarterback, someone whose teammates rally around him, whose teammates believe in him. I, I think it's sort of a fascinating juxtaposition from where they were, their pedigrees, to where they are now. Uh, Jeff Mosher, InsideTheBirds.com, the Inside the Birds podcast. Uh, I want to flip over to defense. I want to get your opinion on uh, the game that John Gannon called yesterday. Uh, and, and, you know, you look at the end of the day, 20-17. to 17, It was another game where they didn't give up more than, you know, 17 points. Uh, but what did you think about their defense overall? So I think, I think the whole, like, discussion on Jonathan Gannon's defense and whether it was good or bad or soft again, like, it would make for a great, like, sort of made-for-TV court drama because <laughs> the, I think it's completely fair if you're, like, the uh, prosecutor here and you're like, what is up with all the off coverage you played? For the first time, you allowed a team to just sit there and pick you apart again across the middle on very similar-looking routes. I mean, their matchup zone – got exploited and you started to wonder when Jonathan Gannon was going to make that adjustment whether they're going to bring somebody in a little bit stop playing off stop playing scared maybe force the issue and you can make the argument maybe they would have lost that game if it was five more minutes longer or Kyler doesn't slide there however at the end of the day Jonathan Gannon could say guys my team gave up my defense gave up 17 points and I will take that any day of the week my de- the defense rests in that in that yeah. <laughs> regard but but somebody can come back and say okay well when you play the cowboys next week or a team that's a little smarter a little bit more disciplined and also has good passing weapons what are you going to do are you going to still be scared if they're picking you apart and be be comfortable with that so it's something to monitor as we go along um i, I was a little surprised by the third late third early fourth how easily kyler murray was able to sit there and and move the ball, uh, especially across the middle where the Eagles have been dangerous. So they obviously took some concepts. They flooded the zone in certain areas. They drew up some confusing routes that caught guys like, oh, I don't know if he's going to break in or break out. And they were able – and also those two guys are very quick uh, and speedy, so they're able to get inside those windows. I'm talking about Marquise Brown and Rondell Moore. Um, so, so you, listen, we can sit here and criticize the, the call, the approach – but they gave up 17 points and nobody threw the ball over their head. So Jonathan Gannon's going to point that out too. Yeah, and, you know, it was weird because the first quarter, I mean, they played, they had the great drive, then they get the interception, uh, mm-hmm. so Arizona doesn't score. In the second quarter, Arizona settled in and moved the ball pretty well at ease and scored 10, and then in the third quarter, Eagles shut them back down. But they were, I don't know, it just seemed that um, <laughs> I saw a lot of criticism of, of Gannon, and I'm thinking, I don't know. Are they are they scoring here? Am I missing something? Like, am I off base on that? It seems that hey, you want to catch the ball. Like, I felt all week that Zach Ertz was going to have a big role, and the Eagles were more than willing to let Ertz catch the ball. But it was kind of like what we saw in years past. You can catch it underneath, but you're not getting over the top on us. And it just felt like it was a very safe defense in a game that maybe you thought they didn't need to be so safe because they didn't, I don't know, maybe there's just not a game-breaking player on that team that worries you. Well, that's the that's the chicken and egg, Mike, and I have not watched a lo- enough Cardinals tape to see how they've been defended, but I've seen it written or stated that why were you so afraid to get beat deep by a team that is among the NFL, you know, uh, not leaders, but uh, the bottom of the NFL in big plays and my response is without having watched tape maybe other teams are doing the same exact thing that the eagles did which is playing off keeping a safety deep making the cardinals dink and dunk up and down the field which they clearly don't want to do they're itchy you know they don't make it they're not careful enough with the football and um kyler i don't think is the type of guy that just wants to give you know, get, go down the field five to ten, ten yards at a time. I think he wants to drive the ball. He want, he's in that pocket looking to make that big play. What did you think, Jeff Bosher, of the Jonathan Gannon's strategy to use a spy against Murray? And what's your overall take on when teams use a spy? Like, uh, where do you suffer by assigning this guy to just spy the quarterback? I mean, uh, as a lifelong Eagles fan, I go all the way back to the day where they tried to spy Randall, right? And if you do that, you're right. you're, you're giving something up. I, I mean, yeah. I was surprised. Kyler Murray only had four rushes. You know, I mean, that I wouldn't have thought that. Coming into the game, you would have thought that he would have more carries than just four. Well, the interesting thing, Pete, is that going into the game, he only had 91 rushing yards, which in four gets to in 20-something a game. He has not been running the ball um, this year the way he has in the past. 
Now, again, I don't know if that's because they've been defending the Cardinals differently or because if he feels that, you know, with Marquise Brown and Zach Ertz and they've got a couple other guys, they're, they're waiting like they were waiting for more to get healthy and Dorch caught, caught a bunch of balls. Maybe he felt like he didn't have to. Maybe he felt like he had better weapons, you know, and we'll see what happens for them when DeAndre Hopkins comes back. But, um, I, you know, I think that we talked about on our pregame show, Jason Avant and Greg Cosell did a, an excellent job of saying spying is good and all, but what, what happens is if you over-rely on it, you, you're telling – the offense, what you're doing defensively, which is not optimal either. Uh, and then there's ways to, to either contain a guy or assign, be assigned onto a guy without actually spying him. So um, it's, it's sort of a pick your poison yeah. in that regard. Sort of like offensively, you know, Nick Sirianni said today, without specifically saying, he basically said, yeah, we threw a ton of screens because – they're blitzing us a lot, and instead of having hot routes, we're going to throw a bunch of screens. And then they worked early, but Arizona caught up, up to it late, and they were not as effective. Uh, so it's like a pick your poison. Some people say the Eagles should have more hot routes built in. Jason Vaughn said if you're a hot route offense, then the defense knows what kind of blitz to leave you so that your hot route is ready to sit down and catch the ball but two yards short of the sticks every time. Yeah. So you have to pick your poison on that too. Yeah, mm. and, and look, I, I thought, you know, Early in the game, the Eagles moved the ball at will. What did Arizona do to make it more difficult as the game went on? Because that first drive was, it looked like they were going to move the ball at will all day long. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, that's the, that's the unanswered question of what happened to A.J. Brown, who caught three balls on the drive and then was not really a factor in the offense going forward. They hit the screen, the tight end, the, the tight end screen to Goddard pretty early, and it was productive. And then it stopped because they kind of went to the well so many times that Arizona made an adjustment there. I don't know exactly how they you know, have to wait till the All-22 came out, but they clearly saw that the Eagles' game plan was to give them the quick hit against the Blitz. So, And they didn't stop blitzing, so they just must have defended the quick hitter a little bit more because they knew it was coming. The safety can sit there and say, all right, I know, I can play this deep middle, pretend I'm going to get lost on, a, on another route, but then go right to the, the, the area where I see the screen at. So I mean, that that was the cat and mouse of it. That's what I think happened to stop the Eagles' offense. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, the first drive. I mean, they just went down eleven, with ease. 11 plays, sixty-four yards, and yeah, that yeah. one yard hurts plunge. Plus, like you're talking about, Jeff. This, you know, that that five for seven hurts was on that drive. Three completions to AJ Brown, and then after that, AJ Brown sort of disappeared. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, I think that they'll have to be a little uh, more. I guess, creative going forward when teams are going to do this to us, we need to be able to make sure that we get the ball in the hands of AJ in this uh, scenario or Devante in this or, or Dallas and not kind of run the same play every, uh, all the time. It did feel like they just wanted to screen the Cardinals to death. Yeah. All right, Jeff Mosher, it's an interesting week. Dallas week is here playing for first place. The Giants are 4-1, and one, the NFC East. By the way, did you check out, uh, happen to hear Ron Rivera's answer? To why Philadelphia yeah, and the well, Giants are a little ahead of where Washington is right now? I saw the tweeted response, but then I also heard the actual elongated response. The tweeted response makes it sound like he's Jim Irsay throwing Carson Wentz under the bus. Okay. The elongated response was just the context of they've been on a different quarterback every year for the last four years and a different system uh, in many cases, so it's hard. There, it sounded like he was saying we're waiting for our system and Carson to all come together. It's going to take some time. Gotcha. Whereas, look at Dallas. You know, they run the same offense. They've had the same coordinator. So when Dak leaves and Cooper Rush comes in, they're not. They don't have to change everything up. Gotcha. All right. Well, Washington loses yesterday. The other three teams all victorious. It is five and zero. Philadelphia four and one. Dallas this week. We'll talk more about it on football at four right here. On the Sports Bash. Uh, actually, uh, let's see. Tuesday, tomorrow, uh, we mm-hmm. will we'll have the Phillies game on. We'll see when that game ends. Wednesday, we'll have football for leading into the Phillies game. So, yes, we'll be back on Wednesday. All right, Jeff. Appreciate it, bud. Can't wait, like That's Bart right. Scott would say. That's right. That's yeah. right.